Hello, welcome to lesson four or episode four, not sure which one I should call it, of uh, PD Howler the Basics. Um, we are going over the particles now. Um, that's up here on this very top area. It says particles. You open the particle panel and um, you have four sub tabs here. You've got particles, bristles, orbicles, and foliage. So for a quick overview, um, particles, you would enable it in order to uh, to load a thing in it if you didn't want to make up your own uh, um, settings. Come down here to load and it gives you a little preview of all of the different uh, particle settings. The ones that I have are black are um, ones that don't have previews um, for them because they're from an older uh, set. So you can you know save these and whatnot. If you save them yourself you will get um, a little preview on them. So lots of different uh, possibilities and uh, things there. Say we choose the uh, grass light. A lot of times it will go ahead and put a gradient in for you. You can use that gradient or you can choose another gradient down here depending on what it is that you want to do. There's various styles. You got line, line plus alpha, brush, nova, shrinking lines, shrinking lines plus alpha. Um, the lines in alpha or the uh, shrinking lines in alpha are very useful if you want to then um, take the uh, resultant uh, piece and use it as a brush. It will automatically have the uh, alpha applied to it for masking. Um, we can go over that in a different uh, thing as well. You have the ability to shade it or to uh, tint it using whatever your primary uh, color is over here. You can uh, have the uh, particles shoot out based on the mouse velocity. You can have them follow the mouse and uh, you can have a, a fog so if you want to get a distance uh, look to um, the various things. Force field allows you to put a uh, um, object over in the uh, swap buffer and uh, then turn on the force field and it will make the um, particles follow the object that's in the force field. There's some other, you know, more settings there. You can scale it so that if you're uh, doing something that's far in the background, you can have a smaller uh, scale to it. And you can also adjust the pin size, which also helps it to have a smaller scale, larger scale if you want it up close, and a larger pin size again for up close things. It's great for your trees, for foliage, for grass, a number of things like that. Um, if you uh, get excited about math, then there's all of these various things that you can uh, do to randomize it, to change it, and whatnot. So, for example, we have that grass loaded. <coughs> you click and you drag, and the particles shoot up. So, that's the way that that uh, works. If I did a smaller scale, you see there, and a larger scale there. If I make the pen bigger, then you get a lot thicker type uh, bases and things to it. And then the gain is how bright it is. You make it super bright or, you know, very dark. So that's quick changes without even changing the shading or the, the tinting and whatnot. Um, if I were to um, shade it, then it is has a shading on the under uh, side. So it gives you some uh, very neat effects. Next one in line is the uh, foliage. It's not next in line on the tabs, but it's next in line that we'll talk about um, because it's very similar to the particles. Once again, you've got scales, <coughs> excuse me, pen size, um, how much light. <coughs> you can change the tint and uh, the ambient to the uh, uh, whatever you're doing and how much ambient you want. Excuse me. <coughs> Um, time scale shading, color cues. Um, you can create an alpha with it, so again, you can uh, create trees and things very swiftly. And uh, there's a library here, which again allows you to um, make all kinds of changes. I don't even touch that. Again, you load. There's little previews that will uh, show the various uh, trees and whatnot. You just go through them until you find the ones that you like. There's a number of the evergreens that are really uh, fun to work with. 
longer you drag, you know, the longer it will go up and create things. Um, so that's uh, how you work the foliage. As I said, very similar to how you work the original particles. Next, um, we'll talk about the bristles. The bristle brushes are um, another um, level of um, getting the realism of traditional media. So um, it has the different ones here. You got your barber brush, your round, your filbert, flat, wedge, dagger, and fan. This allows you to set an angle to the brush. Um, these are really good to use with tablet um, because they do respond very well to the tablet. That's why it has a tablet minimum size here. Um, your bristle density, how many bristles that you have, the radius of it, all of these are adjustable. And then down here you've got your opaque and um, semi-opaque and then translucent and then opaque smeary, very smeary, uh, highly smeary and you know pretty much smeary translucent uh, sort of almost a water um, effect. You can adjust how much your color bleeds and how much your color will mix in with the base color on your board and whether you want sort of a salt and peppered type effect. So um, they're kind of fun to play with. There's our um, the bristle brush and then uh, changing the density. We get it, it automatically will adjust many things, but they're much more thick and dense, very few of the little white spots and things in it. As you notice, it's mixing with the things that's back below, giving you some really neat painterly um, effects as you go along. Um, I use these sometimes when I'm doing um, some of my um, oil paintings. Next is orbicles. The orbicles um, have some different uh, sets. As you can see from the little uh, preview here, they are mobile. They move around. Um, those ty types of things can be adjusted here. How big your brush is. Again, they're really good with the tablet. Densities. How much you're rotating. Um, for each of the three directions, how much spring there is. Delta scale allows you to get some really bigger uh, brushes and movements and things with it. Your color bleed, your color mix, you can change your line style here so that you get some speckle or dynamic, additive, um, etc. And then again, you can also activate gradients so that as it um, goes along, it'll change the, the gradient within it. Uh, for an example, to see how that works, You've got, you know, two things here. When you're using these ones that have the mirror, the shadow and whatnot, it uses your two colors. So if I was to change that to green and then change this one to red, I would get red and green mixing back and forth. Um, so you click. This is the what it's supposed to look like. You get your hue wheel, your themes, and uh, your pigments along with being able to select your pigments here on the side if you want to select them by name or by what the uh, web uh, colors and things are and your regular hue box. You can also adjust it specifically um, right along here and uh, clear out your themes with the uh, X as usual. So once I pick a color then I'm ready. I say okay. So same thing down on the bottom gives you your secondary color on the top there gives you your primary color. So, and uh, I did a clear all, and it always clears to your secondary color, which is why I now have a red background. So, we see the changes as it's moving back and forth through. Lots of fun to play with some of the different uh, ones, and again, it can give you a very painterly um, effect because you've got the, the motion and the movement in the thing. I use these a lot, make them way bigger, and use them for skies. Make really wonderful skies. <laughs>